Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the Bundesliga career mode. This is episode number 36 in the series and we start today's episode off with some player training, a look at the use monthly report and the squad report and the standings as well. As you can see, Cesar Valente now has turned 19 in the game, so happy birthday Cesar Valente and he's up to an 85 overall right now and I've got to say I am really enjoying this save. For this one player alone now you're probably sitting there saying seriously one player is making your save well yes he is because as much as i love this hamburg team and i really do it's a very interesting side i'm assembling here cesar valente is nothing like anything i've ever done before you know seriously to have this goalkeeper that i'm training up to take penalties and free kicks and just be a monster uh, again remember 19 years old he literally just turned 19 and he's already considered one of the best goalkeepers in the world it's awesome to me you know to train this guy up to make him a freak of nature I've never had this before and I'm going to continue to train him for as long as I possibly can I might slow down a little bit next season and possibly in a bit of season four as well but for the most part he's going to continue to get the majority of the exposure during this series I'm going to try and make him the best goalkeeper we've ever seen in any of my career modes ever and I'm confident that will end up turning out to be the case so it's pretty awesome and I'm really enjoying watching his development episode after episode. Uh, still, look at Lee Tay, as you can see, six games to go. We are still five points behind Bayern Munich. I'm not waving the white flag just yet. I'm not throwing my towel into the ring. I still believe there is a chance we could leapfrog them and take the crown away. But the problem is, as you can see, they just don't lose games. They've only lost once this season, and that was to us. No team seems capable of beating Bayern Munich. And, of course, if that doesn't happen between now and the end of the season, they're almost certainly going to go on to win the championship unless they draw all their games, which is highly unlikely. But still, for the first game of today's episode here, we take on Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League quarter-final first leg. And it's bizarre to say that right now, this, this competition seems like more of a winnable one than the Bundesliga. Bayern are slipping up, but in the Champions League, we knocked out Barcelona in the round of 16, over two legs by three goals to two on aggregate. We won the first leg in Germany by three goals to nil, so because of that, I'm definitely fancying my chances of beating the French champions tonight. We know it won't be easy as they've got a really good side, but I'm confident that my young team can get the job done in the first leg and pull off another famous win under the lights of the Volkspark Stadion. Well, here we are then, the Champions League quarter-final. First leg at the Volkspark Stadion between Hamburg and Paris Saint-Germain. And what an achievement it is to get here. Getting through our relatively tough group and then knocking out Barcelona over two legs in a round of 16. And just not conceding an away goal is the key. Like in the Barcelona game, not conceding early. That's my key to this game. It's Aubameyang had the first chance, but headed it wide. So let's be tight defensively. Let's not concede. Let's keep a clean sheet and take that back to France. Pjanic for PSG, through towards Kroos, great ball towards Mkhitaryan, and the former Borussia Dortmund and Shakhtar man finds Matuidi, and the shot comes in for Aubameyang, and it is the worst start to the game because just nine minutes in, PSG have an early lead, Valente beaten at his near post, and I'll have to watch this back on the replay, it was a really nice ball inside here, but... Ah, that's a good strike. It's right in at the near post. Valente might be a little bit disappointed with that one, but it is a good strike by Aubameyang, and the former Borussia Dortmund and St Etienne man rifles the ball in, and the away fans are celebrating an early goal. And this is this has taken the wind out of me early, because I said right from kickoff, we need to keep a clean sheet. We need to be tight defensively. We're already one nil down. And we got to get back in this tie right now. We cannot lose the first leg. And PSG now have just got to be tight defensive. They can take a 1 0 lead back to the uh, part of the Prowse. They'll love it. As Aubameyang goes for goal. And that is a good save by Valente. Diving to his right hand side, turning behind for a corner. And PSG has started off very well. We haven't started at all. It's still 1 0. And they are looking very dangerous early. As that cross comes in, and it is 2 0 to PSG. Oh my word, 20 minutes in, and I am all over the shop. Aubameyang has got his second of the night, and already the former Dortmund man has put the French side two goals over the Volkspark Stadion. This is a disaster. I am all over the place right now. The cross came in, Luan backtracked, I think it was Luan, and he couldn't get there in the air. Aubameyang beat him to it. And it is 2-0 to PSG, and I'm shell-shocked right now. Valente made a great save, turned it wide for a corner. We couldn't mark up after it was played short and whipped into the centre. And it is 2-0 to Paris Saint-Germain. 
And, oh my word, this, this leg could be done by halftime if we carry on like this. This has been an awful, awful start. We have got to turn this around right now. What's going on? I'm literally, I'm literally stunned right now. We are two goals down to PSG. We beat Barca 3-0 here at the Vox Park Stadion. We've only lost one game all series long here, and that was against Bayern in the Cup when we fielded a weakened side. This is bizarre. This, is a, this place is a fortress. Why are we starting off so poor? Correa receives the ball from Sane, goes for goal, and hits the post. Hits the post, and I didn't really get that out of his feet quickly enough there. I played it inside with Sane, and I took the shot on really early. But that was a, not a bad strike from Correa, but hitting the post, and our best chance there hits the woodwork. Sane to Tar, and he'll play that wide towards Masuaku. Luan makes a run down the left flank, and tried to control, but Aurier is there. Luan wins it back, though, through the gap towards Correa, who's had our first and only chance of the game so far, hitting the post with his shot. Nice piece of dribbling, a great ball through towards Leroy Sane. Sane cuts inside, Leroy Sane through towards Correa, who goes for goal, and it's just off target and behind for a goal kick another good chance for Angel Correa on the weaker left foot and that was not too far off target but he couldn't hit it and it is still 2-0 to PSG Kroos for PSG he's been silently very good in this game but between he gives that ball away and Tolisso gets it back for us good ball through to Ostendera Correa running through down left hand side this is where he's at his best one on one with the defender is he going to beat him yes he is Angel Correa inside surely to make it 2-1 he's done it Angel Correa puts us back in the game and back in the tie right before the half time mark and we so sorely needed that Correa with the goal and it is a very important one we'll go into the break down by a a goal and still trailing but we needed him to take one of these chances he missed the first two but he doesn't miss this one this is when he's at his best when he's played through with a through ball and he only has one defender to beat he beats him with a no touch dribble cuts inside and finesses the ball past the goalkeeper and in to the back of the net it's Hamburg 1 PSG 2 and this doesn't make up for a very poor half from me but at least we are back in the game and back in the tie 2-1 well done Correa there's the positive before the break so a bold decision then to bring off Lewis Holtby, the captain. He's a, he's a great player, I said before, very underrated. You often don't see how great defensive midfielders are in my save because obviously the nitty-gritty stuff sort of gets cut out of the editing, really. But he's very, very good. But I just feel like as he gets tired, we need to bring on fresher legs on offense to run at tired legs of PSG as Maya finds Sane. And Sane beats his man here and crosses to the, the far post, blocked. Maya will try and win it in the air, though, and does very well. And now Correa on the half volley. That's not a bad effort. And Kevin Trapp has to turn it behind for a corner. So Correa is feeling it in this game despite missing two chances early on. And from the corner, I'll drill it to him. Stendera, Correa has space to shoot he'll go for goal again oh what a goal Angel Correa has just made it 2-2 and what a goal from the Argentine and three minutes after the break we've came from two goals down to equalize and Angel Correa has said to Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang whatever you can do I can do better they've both scored two goals each and that one is the pick of the bunch Stendera picks him out from the corner he was unmarked on the edge of the area he levers it from range, and we're back on level terms. Hamburg 2, PSG 2. I said a couple of episodes ago, this side has got fight, it's got desire. It's got probably more fight and desire than any other Korean mode team I've had. They never seem to give up. We've come from two goals down to make it 2-2. What a fantastic turnaround. Can we get a third and go on to win this game? What a story it will be. Come on, Hamburg. 11 minutes to go. Will one of these teams win the game late on and take the advantage going into the game in France? Will one of these players be a hero? The stage is set as we approach the final 10 minutes of the game. What is going to happen in what has been a thrilling first leg here at the Volkspark Stadion as PSG come forward. Ball inside towards Bahavec off the bench. Number 24 finds Tony Kroos. Kroos tackled by Stendera. And now a chance on the break. And Maya through to Correa. We've got bodies coming forward. Correa holds it up. Flicks it through towards Muller. Back inside if you can towards Correa. Correa towards Tolisso. Tolisso through one on one. Just win the game. It's saved by Trap. And Kurzawa will get it clear. What a chance. Trap with a save. And Stendera almost intercepted Aurier. And PSG are looking very very vulnerable at the back, but they're going to get it clear. And that was the moment for Tolisso to win us the game. But it was a brilliant stop by the German goalkeeper. And it is still 2-2. Sakai helps it on towards Luan and he'll try and take it around his man. He's done so. Really well done from Luan there. And a great ball out wide towards Muller. If he can keep the ball in play, he's done so. Can he take it around his man? Oh, yes, he can. Nikolai Muller. Fantastic run. Getting inside the area. Drills it into the far post. Can Correa get it? Possibly into the side netting. 
into the side netting and Angel Correa was inches away from winning us the game and getting us his hat trick. He, he, was, he was always going to find it difficult to squeeze it in there, but he almost beat Trap. But unfortunately, it's into the side netting. Di Maria to Sergio Oriette. Saliso stands him up. Inside towards Gundogan. Gundogan on the turn. Inside, Thiago Silva throws forward. Ball inside, shot comes in. Great save by Valente. And turns it behind for a corner. Neither side has deserved to lose this game. That is a great stop by Cesar. And there it is. Referee calls time on a thrilling 90 minutes here in Germany. And the game was finished. Hamburg 2, PSG 2. What a fantastic game. What a fantastic match. And advantage PSG going to the second leg, having those two away goals. But credit Angel Correa and credit the whole team for getting back in this game. We were two goals down just before the break. Correa gave us a goal back in the 45th minute on the stroke of half time to reduce the deficit, make it 2-1. And then five minutes after the break, score his second goal and make it 2-2. So a fantastic team effort to rally back from two goals down to make it 2-2. And you can see the match stats right here. Um, Ten shots for us. Eight for them, six on target for both sides. He had a bit more possession. Neither side to deserve, neither, ah, neither side deserved to lose this game. What a thriller! And we'll be doing it all again in the next episode. And I can't wait for that. What a great game this was. And I'm sure the next one will be just as good. So what a fantastic game that was. We come back from two goals down to claim a very credible draw. And keep our chances of reaching the semi-final alive. We shouldn't have been in that position, that's true. But for a young side to not give up and have the confidence getting back into the game. Despite the bleak start, this is exactly why I'm loving this Hamburg team. A very good effort. And it means that even though PSG will be favourites to advance in the semi second leg due to them being at home and us having to score at least once in France we are still in the tie and had Correa not hit his brace that wouldn't have been the case. Uh, falling out the door with some sad news Jonathan Tarr did pick up an injury in that game it was right at the end of it he'll be out for three weeks so that's a massive shame he'll miss the second leg and also a couple of crucial Bundesliga league games as well and even more <laughs> disappointing was following that news that Tarr will be injured for the next three weeks. Our replacement Kleber two days later was put on the transfer list because he hasn't been offered a contract so thanks very much board you couldn't wait until the end of the season or anything no you do it two days later after finding out he's going to be replacing Jonathan Tarr great motivation for him but still coming to the second game of today's episode here we take on Schalke away at the Veltins Arena back in the Bundesliga as you can see six games to go we are five points behind Bayern Munich we're still in this title race we're not giving up yet but we need other teams to do us a favor we keep winning our games we keep on picking up the points but sadly Bayern Munich keep winning their games as well which means they never seem to be caught we take on Schalke though we're still feeling optimistic we've had to make some changes we've got the reverse leg against PSG in a few days time as well but even though we're tired even though we're scattered I still believe we can get a big win in this game and keep putting the pressure on Bayern Munich so come on Hamburg let's follow up that big result with another big win here and get ourselves the three points we aim to show Bayern we are still in this title race Geist for Schalke, plays it through towards Shupo Moting, controls very well and finds Marco Hoger. Hoger on the ball, turns his man, finds Ayogo down the left hand side. Sane comes to rob it off him now, now a chance on the break. Sane finds Yannick Gerhardt through the gap towards Leroy Sane against his former club down the right hand side. Sane's got the pace, Ayogo can't keep up. Sane on the ball, plays it back towards Yannick Gerhardt, arriving, goes for goal and finds the back of the net as well. And what a strike by Yannick Gerhardt. He rifles the ball in with the weaker right foot and makes it Schalke. Nil Hamburg won, and I'm very surprised the goalkeeper got beat there. But it was a very ferocious strike from Gerhardt. Look at that, he is at the near post, but he just levers it with the weaker right foot and rifles the ball in. That's his second goal as well in the last three games, I think. Now he's playing very well in this second half of the season. He's a very underrated member of our squad. Yannick Gerhardt gets goal number four in the Bundesliga this year, I think five for the season. I think he got one in the Champions League as well. And we take an early lead here at the Veltins Arena and that is exactly what we needed in this game. Schalke nil, Hamburg won and a great start. What I really want is a second goal before the break. So I can take off Correa at halftime and get him fresh for the game in Tuesday, on, uh, on Tuesday night against PSG. Gerhard through the gap towards Sane. Goes for goal. What a save by the goalkeeper and turn behind for a corner. So I sense blood. I smell it. We started off very brightly. Let's keep up this intensity and try and find that second goal. Holtby towards Correa. This worked against PSG. Will it work against Schalke? Correa gets inside with a roulette. Goes for goal. Deflected. Oh, he's gone in. No, what? What's he been disallowed for? The flag's up on the far side. I think Clever might have been offside. It's like a huge deflection. 
And yeah, he's off. Oh man, I, that's exactly what we wanted, a second goal. The ball fell on the back of the net. It took a huge deflection, that's why the goalkeeper was deceived. And Clever, oh man, he's in, he's on the transfer list. He just couldn't shuffle his feet quickly back and get behind the line. That's a good ball through towards Sydney Sam and Sakai's got to come across and try and meet him there. Sam beats him to the ball, turns, chips it into the centre. Free header, great save by Valente, but the rebound is turned in by Franco De Santo. And six minutes after the restart, Schalke are back on level terms and I've taken off my starters, I've taken off Correa, I've taken off Holtby and I've taken off Sane and we were a goal up, we were fine. Valente made a great save but unfortunately De Santo headed the ball into the open goal, I'm not even sure what happened to Clever. he just seemed to fall over and fall into the back of our goal but Schalke are back on level terms and I saw at half time that Bayer had equalised against Bayern and were on level terms. And now, in a game where we could cut the gap to three points, we're slipping up. We can't do this. This is a rare moment where Bayern won't get all three points in one of their games. We've got to make sure we get the win in ours. Come on. Sakai's throw and Gregorich will flick it back towards Young. Young inside towards Brandt. Brandt is fouled there, surely, referee. But Young picks up, so it's okay. Now through to Fabinho. Let's run across his body. Through the gap towards Gerhardt. Scored our goal. Finds Ashton Gutz down the right hand side. Can he keep the ball in play? Yes. Can he cross the wall in? Yes. Can he pick out our teammate? Yes. And Julian Brandt scores. And we are back in front. Get in. Schalke 1. Hamburg 2. And Julian Brandt puts us back in front. Ashton Gutz off the bench. Whips in across. Picks out Julian Brandt and he beat the goalkeeper to the ball from the cross. He came out, got caught in no man's land, couldn't get there and the header is won and it goes into the empty net. Fantastic ball by Gutz, a brave header by Brandt. He gets a punch in the face but he doesn't care. We're 2-1 up, we're back in front. This game is where we need to show our character. Like in the Hoffenheim game, we need to come back after seeing the opposition equalise. We've done it again, Brandt with a goal, it's 2-1. Fantastic stuff. Nine minutes to go and these moments define a season. Can we hang on to a priceless win? Young away. Gerhardt, uh, sorry, Brandt through, sorry, towards Timo Werner. Holds it up. Brandt continues his run. Gets picked out. Hoover there's one man to beat. Brandt has beaten him. Needs some support. Plays the cross towards Ashton Goods off the bench to surely seal the points. Ashton Goods, what a save by Giefer. Turns it behind for a corner. Well, there it is. Final score. Schalke 1, Hamburg 2. And you may be wondering why I'm not sounding as enthusiastic as I was a few minutes ago. It's because a couple minutes before the end of the game, I saw in the top right of the screen that Ian Robben scored a late winner for Bayern Munich to win them the game at the Allianz Arena. And Bayer Leverkusen couldn't hold on. So it's, it's, it's a win that keeps us in the title race. But I don't know, man. With five games to go now, we're still five points behind. And we needed Bayer Leverkusen to hold on to that point as we held on to our three here at the Veltins. I mean, we're guaranteed to finish in second place now. We've guaranteed a Champions League place as well. That's why the subs ran on the pitch, but I think it's all over. I think it's all over. It was a pretty balanced game. Both sides played quite well, but we took our chances. Schalke dominated possession, but we had more chances, I think, when going forward and looking to score more goals. Uh, man of the match probably would go to, not entirely sure, maybe Brandt. I thought Brandt had a very good game. Obviously scored our second goal and was very, very good. So I'll give Brandt man of the match in this one, but... Either way, I'm really annoyed because Bayern scoring that late winner against Bayer Leverkusen, getting the three points, means that with five games to go, there's, there's still five points between us. And we needed Bayer to get something in that game, but instead, I'm just not sure we can make up the ground now. And I think this championship is going to go to Bayern Munich probably before the final day. As you can see the league table here. Five games to go. I think it's theirs. And that is going to end today's episode of the Bundesliga career mode, guys, as well. So I want to say a massive thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed today's episode of the Bundesliga career mode, then please do consider leaving a like. That is, of course, much appreciated. It really helps the channel grow as well. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Bundesliga career mode, which features the Champions League quarterfinal second leg against PSG. Very soon. Do not miss the next episode. It's going to be massive.